seven months ago by Cameroonian custom officials in Lambe, 50 kilometers from Douala. They were going to be sent to Nigeria in this boat. Across Central Africa, elephants are massacred for their ivory. And the rebellion in the Central African Republic makes poaching easier. Many of the rebels are poachers. And they take advantage of the rebellion to poach. They can do it freely because there are no threats, no constraints, nothing can stop them. In Cameroon, hundreds of elephants are killed every month in national parks by poachers from the neighboring Sudans. These poachers come from Sudan, Sudan and South Sudan. They come every year in the dry season. They are extremely well armed. They have paramilitary training. They are armed with rocket launchers and with light weapons like AK-47s. They are the real killers of the elephants. In a meeting in Yaoundé in March, the economic community of Central African states decided to unify their efforts to fight against poaching. The purpose of this three-day meeting is to organize a coordinated military response between the three countries concerned with this problem before the Sudanese go back home at the end of the dry season, that is, within the next two months. The former Cameroonian footballer Patrick Boma was designated to inform people of the urgency of this plan. To fight poaching in national parks, elephants are now protected by armed park rangers who are backed by state military forces. The operation cost 125 million CFA francs, or almost 2 million euros. Fighters of the Free Syrian Army say they have captured an important air force base in the province of Dera. The advance by the FSA came following three days of intense fighting between Syrian government forces and rebel fighters for control of the strategic air force base, which houses the 49th Brigade of the Syrian army. Meantime, embattled Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has warned those plotting to unseat him to worry about the consequences of a post-Assad Syria. More in this report. The fighting, the Free Syrian Army captured a former air force station, the 49th Brigade, in the town of Hirbit Hazaleh in the southern province of Dara. The rebels broadcast images of the site showing burnt out bunkers and destroyed military vehicles. After intense fighting, the rebels were finally able to enter the brigade on Thursday. With the grace of God, we have been able to free the brigade through the work of the heroes of the Free Syrian Army. Bashar al-Assad's regime continues to launch missile strikes to stop rebel advances like here in the northern Damascus suburb, Barzay. The missile strikes have caused severe damage and left many dead. Bashar al-Assad continues to condemn what he calls an international conspiracy against his regime. In an interview on Turkish television earlier this week, he said there would be a domino effect on other countries if his regime were to fall, which would create instability for years to come. We are surrounded by a group of countries that help terrorists and allow them to enter Syria. Turkey's government officially harbors terrorists and sends them into Syria. They're also crossing over from Jordan. Although Assad's regime still has the support of Iran and Russia, China seems to be taking its distance. Beijing says it does not support any side in the conflict. The Chinese government shares the same view with Qatar, Saudi Arabia and Bahrain that we will firmly enhance our cooperative partnership regardless of changes in regional and international situations. The United Nations says that over 70,000 people have been killed in the conflict, which is now in its second year. Authorities in the Chinese city of Shanghai have ordered the calling of over 20,000 birds following the discovery of the contagious bird flu virus in the area. A temporal ban has been imposed on the sale of birds in Shanghai since the outbreak of the virus. And thousands of demonstrators have gathered in Buenos Aires to express their dissatisfaction with the response of local authorities to the flash floods that battered much of the province. We have more on those stories and others in this news roundup by Canal France International. 
has temporarily banned the sale of live poultry to prevent the spread of bird flu. The H7N9 virus has caused the death of six people, four in Shanghai. The virus, not previously seen in humans, was discovered in pigeons and has led authorities to order the slaughter of 20,000 birds sold in Shanghai's markets. Taiwan has also reported 12 suspected cases. The World Health Organization says there is no evidence of human-to-human -human transmission. Two days after flash floods killed 57 people in the province of Buenos Aires, authorities in Argentina are being criticized for their lack of preparedness. Demonstrations are being held to demand food aid and financial compensation. Up to 100,000 homes were destroyed in the floods. Volunteer groups have been set up to deliver food and drinking water to thousands of people. President Cristina Fernandez has promised to provide emergency aid as soon as possible. TEPCO, the company managing the Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan, says that around 120 tons of radioactive water have seeped into the soil between a damaged reservoir and the surrounding protective shell. Repairs began on Saturday. Earlier this week, the plant's cooling system failed, prompting a three-hour shutdown, the second shutdown this month. Authorities say that the plant, damaged in the 2011 earthquake and tsunami, is now stable, but that years of work lie ahead before the effects of the disaster are contained. 72 people have been confirmed dead following the collapse on Thursday of an apartment building in Mumbai. More than 100 people were rescued. Witnesses said the seven-story building, which was inhabited, although still under construction, collapsed within seconds. A municipal commissioner and a senior police officer have been suspended for collusion with the builders, two of whom are being sought by police. One resident said the building was only supposed to be four stories, but that floors continued to be added. Building collapses are frequent in India and are blamed on poor construction practices caused by a rising demand for housing. We go for another break. We'll be back momentarily. Nene, I said you. Na? Inge, si kuro si mbosi bane. I said you si haja su vodinge jup. Si kuro si bamban, I said you mani pensiona njomba ono ibuna deba ye si kuro si. Hee, Khalifa, muna mangu si sese chetu kwa muka shame bukana. Kwa mami kwa mku pensiona mba shame boli. Hee? Kima shame lanke na mku kani. Yuko tunji boli purle ya sosa sosa sosa. Miba iba shame lanke na. Hee? Hii kuma ya yari manare ki furuma fuburo. Nene, kwa mune rege. Khalifa, umuwa na isar manare ganyam malake. Inge anu jokera nyam. Sosa security fundo do ne mbro kap. Moka mikone ano sani ano manje ano ro rogman tu pension uwa nujo uya bacha maboli sinchi kwa wesene wangu regem drawback bacha mlanke na pangu chami weringe kulenkone butinken bolemuk banjari no moja moja tende to banja finchi po kubena bena bacha ma bati social security oto tokja au nukanga na na ano manje ro rogman tu pension jo uya bacha maboli le kujibu fumbala jo sakre joni mama ti ne ne nujo kula social security kujala jaka yolen bukana kde au well, before we take leave of you, a quick reminder of our top stories. The new Kanilai camp commander has led scores of volunteers in the latest monthly cleansing exercise in the president's bad place. Environmentalists from the sub-region have concluded a three-day forum in Banjul on climate and species vulnerability under the ages of the Protected Areas Resilience to Climate Change Project. Authorities in Cameroon have drafted in the army to tackle heavily armed poachers, wreaking havoc on the country's dwindling elephant population. And the battle for Syria is intensifying with reports of heavy fighting in the region of Dera, where members of the Free Syrian Army captured an Air Force base belonging to the Syrian Army's 49th Brigade. That's all in this edition of the news. Thanks for your time and stay tuned to GRCS and enjoy our programs from me and the rest of the news team. Have a good night.